Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Stephanie. Welcome to my house in Texas. Please come on in. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Be sure to visit our website, homeworthy.com, to discover amazing furniture, art, accessories, and more, all handpicked by our editors to help transform your house into a home. All of the items are inspired by the episodes you see here on Homeworthy. Enjoy! Hi there, I'm Stephanie Stallard. We are in Bartlett, Texas right now, outside of Austin, about 45 minutes. I live here with my two dogs. This is Ralph and Floyd. And I have been renovating this house for the last two and a half years, um, taking it from definitely a livable uh, home uh, that needed a, a massive facelift um, and making it my own. And I'm excited to show you. So this house was built in about 1906 to 1910. Um, it was built by a gentleman named T. Denton, and he actually owned the lumber yard here in Bartlett. Um, and there's some really neat uh, signage of his uh, stamped wood under the stairs that says T. Denton, Bartlett, Texas. Um, I did go down to the courthouse in the county and sat at a computer in the basement for a couple of hours trying to find the history of all the different owners to see if there was anything really interesting there. Um, it's definitely went through quite a few hands over the years. Um, the owners prior to me were here 20, prior to that another 20. Um, the gentleman that was here two owners ago said that he purchased it from a military colonel that had just let it sit for uh, years and years and I was so curious what was the paint color on the outside when he bought it and he said there was no paint it had all chipped away um, and so he did a ton of work in this house with his family um, and it was really great to be able to hear that story from him welcome to my entryway so this is the first space people walk into when they come through the front door it is grand we have two sets of pocket doors um i mean it's you could fit two beds in this space it's it's a lot of room um and it has just this beautiful original detailing back here that's called fretwork, um, kind of separating the two spaces into the stairway. Um, in this room, uh, I did a lot. I peeled back so many layers. There was fabric on the walls. There was then wallpaper behind that. And before I could remove the wallpaper, I had to pull those nails and staples that were holding the fabric up. So yeah, it was just a peel back process. Um, I ended up adding the wainscoting or the beadboard. Um, into this space and I kind of did that because I ended up finding behind the wall um, some wallpaper, original wallpaper that had three different patterns. It had the lower pattern, it had kind of the band, and then it had an upper pattern. Um, and so I kind of wanted to mimic that line across the space that had been there before. And so I kind of just cleaned the space up, Put some neutral colors in. Um, this flooring was here when I bought the house and I'm sure that there's wood floor underneath. Um, hopefully the next owners would want to maybe uncover that as well because I think that's just such a beautiful part of the house, especially since it was in such good condition. Um, but yeah, I filled the room with all kinds of things. Um, one of my favorite pieces is this Kuba cloth. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I did end up finding it at an estate sale, hanging in a closet with blankets and quilts. And when I brought it to check out, the woman running the estate sale was like, I'm so glad somebody saw that and knew that it was something special. It was folded into a piece, you know, this big. Um, and she didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was. So I went home, I Google imaged it and it's very old. Um, my understanding, and again, I hope I get this correct, my understanding is that 
Kuba cloths originated from the Congo and women wore them as skirts. So they would spin around um, and it was a skirt. Um, it's got just beautiful colors, beautiful texture. It's aged so well. So I did want to use this space to display it because it's, it's a big piece. I hung the Kuba cloth using kind of these quilt hooks. They just, it's a nail in the wall that you hook this wood piece onto. Um, I was looking for different ways to, to find to hang it, but you truly just unscrew this and it falls out. And so um, that was a fun measuring project to figure out where to space all of those and make sure they were level, but I think it turned out really great. So um, I love having this piece here. Um, it's also a conversation piece. I think, you know, a lot of people don't know what it is and it's a fun story to tell. Um, and I always like to learn something. This piece, there's a story um, when we get to the, the primary bathroom, there's a fun story about this piece. I found it at an antique store um, in Austin and it's just an old shop table, you would think, but when I got it here to the house, I cleaned this up, which is a metal kind of measuring tape. It's got the, the sort of um, yardage in here. So I imagine this used to be used as a uh, fabric measuring at an old general store. But when I was cleaning out the inside, I ended up finding an original store receipt, um, which told me where it came from. And it came from a general store out of Shiner, Texas. Um, and yeah, I ended up finding later on in the bathroom, which I'll show you, um, a piece on Facebook marketplace. And in the listing, it said it came from a general store in Shiner, Texas. So I don't know for sure a thousand percent, but I do feel like I reunited two pieces, um, that, you know, were together a long time ago and now are together again. So other things in this room, I mentioned the fretwork here that is original throughout the house. When I got the house, if there was original woodwork, um, stained, unpainted, I would never touch it. I would leave it as is. But if something was already painted, um, you know, again, I hope the new owners uh, of the house, the next owners, um, you know, would want to take that time to peel back the layers of the, the paint and find that original stained wood. But if it was left untouched, I left it untouched. Um, so this entryway, you see some of the fretwork is painted, some of it is still the stained wood. Um, I just gave it a little bit of a refresh, but the detail work in this is incredible. And so um, really a showstopper for the house. This piece, which I found in a uh, antique store in Minnesota, it's called a batik, which is um, painted basically on silk. And so I just love the piece for its color, its texture, it's unique, it's different. It's definitely not painted on a canvas. Um, and I think it's perfect for this space. So I would love to show you my living room next, which is just off the entryway through one of three sets of pocket doors. I was living in Austin for about seven years um, before moving up here. And I, when I moved to Austin, I wanted to buy a house and I wanted a project um, where I could renovate something old with character, but I just wasn't finding that in Austin at that time in my budget. And so I decided to just get a new build and lived there for some time. But that kind of yearn to um, work on this old project, I was watching so many other people do it on Instagram. Um, following cheap old houses and seeing, you know, all of these houses pop up all across the country and um, kind of there was a pivotal point where I was sort of like, okay, I'm either going to do it or I'm just going to keep talking about it. And I was almost about to move to upstate New York um, because there's so many options there, just, you know, cheap and just a ton of options with amazing character. Um, and then I saw this house pop up and it is about 45, 50 minutes up outside of Austin, and I kind of weighed the pros and cons of, um, you know, moving to upstate New York, which I lived in New York City once, and I loved that area, the Northeast. Um, but this kept me closer to my friends, closer to my family, um, and, you know, risk reward. And I ended up with, you know, the house that checked every single one of my boxes with the original character. Um, and, you know, still livable though. I had to be able to live here and renovate at the same time. Um, and so, yeah, I, I definitely got through the project more quickly than I thought I would, but um, it, it was what I was looking for at the time and even now for sure. This is the living room. 
and it definitely has had some updates, but I did keep the fabric on the walls that the prior owner put up. Um, I loved the green, I love the solid. I think some of my favorite pieces in here, this coffee table, this marble coffee table is my best thrift find of my life. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. Down in San Antonio, I had to run down there in the morning because I knew somebody else was gonna steal it. Um, it's solid marble, it's got a solid marble base. These sell for $3,000 on uh, First Dibs or Cherish, but I got mine for 125. Um, and the wildest part is when I was picking it up from the owner, she said, yeah, you just missed it. There was a whole dining room table that went with it. So I was super bummed to miss that, but this is a piece that I will carry with me over and over and again from uh, house to house. So I love this one. On top of the coffee table, um, in real life, I move these books around because this is also where I eat. <laughs> um, but it's just a lot of books that I've collected from estate sales. Again, you're gonna hear estate sales, Facebook marketplace, thrifting. Um, but yeah, it's books, it's different tchotchkes, it's rocks, girls love rocks, I don't know why. Um, but a really cool old antique domino set. Um, again, with textures, stones, um, those metals, brass, those sort of things. I love to just mix all of those things together. So the coffee table is representative of kind of all those different materials. Um, one of the really neat things on the coffee table is this tic-tac-toe, um, which lived in my grandmother's house in Tennessee during my childhood. And um, I saw she had put it in the basement one year and I asked her if I could have it. So um, I think you see a lot of these these days at places like West Elm, but this one actually has a lot of meaning to me. Um, myself and all my cousins played with it, and so I love that it's now in my house. I think these chairs make a huge statement in this space. Um, again, Facebook Marketplace. They were white leather, and the leather was kind of sticky, <laughs> and so I knew I wanted to put uh, a print on them. I found this print and had them reupholstered by a gentleman here in Bartlett, which it's a very small town, and so to find uh, an upholsterer here was a win, and he did a really nice job kind of with um, you know, getting the checker print um, to match up perfectly, and so he was a really skilled tradesperson that it was nice to work with. And I paired a pattern on pattern, which is something I learned from many of the designers that I follow, but I paired it with kind of these um, probably old rug pillows. And so, yeah, I think these chairs are another one that would be very hard for me to let go if I was to ever um, sell them. And there's a few sets of chairs around the house that I feel that way about. Um, obviously the original fireplace, uh, so again, I want to preface, this was not wood before I found it. I would never paint unstained wood. It was white when I bought the house. It was painted white. And I really wanted these original tiles to pop. Um, there's, some of them are a little shaky, but they're so old and perfect um, that I thought the black would kind of center this room and let those um, tiles do their thing. And so obviously this is the the showstopper of the space, just this beautiful original fireplace. And there's three of them in the house and one that I ended up putting back in. Well, unfortunately, all of the, when I purchased the house, none of the fireplaces were um, usable. And so I have not had the time to make them usable. I think that would be something that is definitely doable. Um, the chimney stacks are still there. And it's just something that I didn't want to put my time and attention to. And also it's Texas. I would probably use it one day out of the year. So it was not high of the, on the list for me. On the fireplace mantle, gosh, I feel like um, I talk about materials all the time. I'm super drawn to stone. Um, I found these marble books, um, which are super heavy. Solid marble, three of them, three sets. Found these at an antique store in Taylor, just about 15 minutes south from me. Um, found this hand at an estate sale. Um, and then this wood piece at an estate sale as well. So kind of just trying to mix different materials um, and create visual interest. So if you're looking to start bringing secondhand pieces into your house, um, as far as estate sales go, there's estatesales.net and that's available anywhere you live. And something I like to do is the, the emails for those come out about 
maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, and they tell you what estate sales are happening in your area on you know Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I scroll through the pictures. If there's maybe like two or three things that are really of interest for me out of those photos, then I will make a trip out to go to that estate sale just because I get a sense that that person might have more things that I want. Um, but it takes a lot for me to like want to actually go to one. So there has to be enough there for me to make that trip. Um, and then on Facebook Marketplace, it is about consistency. It is about being on Facebook Marketplace every day. It's about the algorithm, learning what you like, saving things, even if it's not exactly what you want. Um, just getting that algorithm to try to start picking up on things that you would want. And then every once in a while, you'll land on something like the co coffee table um, and you know you have to snag it. You can't wait if it's the thing you want and it shows up, go get it immediately. Um, you know, if, if you think there's gonna be a lot of people bidding on that same item, offer them $20 more. Um, offer to send a Venmo deposit. There's ways to kind of be the first one to get those items if it's something that is really important to you. And don't be afraid of refinishing something like these chairs that I mentioned. Um, obviously they were not in a fabric that I would want, but I knew I could refinish them if I got the chairs for a good enough price to begin with. So. It's funny, when uh, I saw this house come up on the market, I called a friend who is a real estate agent and I said, let's go look at this house. Um, I don't know, you know, if I, I know I'm ready, but I don't know how I'll feel after looking at it. I have to weigh so many things. Um, we came up here, we looked at it. To get it, it was a very long process of going back and forth with the owner. But yeah, immediately I knew that this is, you know, was one that I wanted to go after. Did not look at another house. Um, this was the only house that I looked at and luckily was able to get it. But um, yeah, I knew kind of walking around and I, I don't know what brain that is, but I have a brain that, you know, allows me to kind of see the potential of a room, see what it could look like, see where I would put things, see what I want to buy. The most fun part of this process for me is collecting pieces for the house. Um, and you know, just finding things that are perfect for the room and um, doing that throughout the whole house was almost as fun as the renovation itself. Everything you see, almost everything in this entire house is Facebook Marketplace, estate sales, um, antique stores, thrift stores in this area, uh, Goodwill, you know, I've been to all of them in this area and I became a, a huge estate sales shopper through this as well. and. The thrill of the hunt, the you know um, bargaining, all of that is is so much fun. So it's full of secondhand pieces, some that I've had reupholstered, um, some that are just perfect as is. But yeah, it's it's eclectic. There's antique pieces, there's super modern pieces, um, there's pieces with a lot of good patina. That's kind of what I'm drawn towards: is things that have, tell a story. Um, different materials, metal, marble, wood, fabric, um, and glass, all of those different things are kind of what I'm attracted to and it's been so much fun. One last thing that I wanna show you in this room is there's two sets of pocket doors here, but this one in particular is just one door and it's huge. It has the original hardware that still works and it has the key and everything. And so this is just an original thing in the house that is incredible. And the size of it is just insane. Um, you don't see, I think, this size, especially in Texas. Um, and so it's a piece of the house that I love to show people and, and definitely shocks them. Um, so yeah, so that kind of leads us perfectly into the dining room. This space, again, we've got a beautiful fireplace, which I'll show you in a second. And it was in rough shape. It had, you know, various wallpapers, top and bottom, uh, which thankfully there wasn't fabric on top for me to have to then get to the wallpaper. At least it was just the wallpaper, but I went through peeling back that layer. Then I did a skim coat. Um, and then obviously paint. And in this space, I knew that I wasn't gonna use a formal dining table and you know, with it just being me and the dogs and having friends over every once in a while. So I wanted to find a way to make this room kind of multifunctional. And so I found this walnut uh, dining table that's also a ping pong table, which works well for when I have friends over, um, there's been a lot of fun nights in this room and it definitely gets used more than it would if it was just a dining room. 
Um, another set of chairs that I love that I found. These were originally not great, but I saw the bones, I saw the shape, I saw that they could be better. And so they're super, you know, you just sink into them when you sit down. Um, and yeah, I think they are perfect in this room just for people, you know, that are watching any ping pong games that are happening. I think the most important piece in this whole room is the original china cabinet, which has not been painted over, um, still in perfect condition, absolutely stunning. Um, you know, holds all the things that I never use, but are still pretty. And yeah, just to think that, you know, whoever, all the, the people that have lived in this house over the years have seen the beauty in this and the value in this and left it as is and taken care of it, um, I think is, is just something special to think about. And it's just, it's stunning. Behind me, you'll see this gallery wall of women. Uh, I can't remember where I initially saw it, but I saw someone do something similar of just sort of collected portraits of people that were painted. And I had this idea that, you know, it starts with one and then it starts with another, and then you sort of see a trend and then you're drawn to them when you're shopping. And, um, so here I am now, I've, I have a wall of women. Um, I'm drawn to things that are conversation starters that are just a little bit weird, um, but also interesting, also beautiful and unique. Uh, and so this wall is definitely representative of that. A lot of them are just found in random places, but one of them in particular was done by a friend um, in the, I hope I don't mess this up, but a cost, acoustic style, um, which is wax painting. And so um, that would be this one here. So a friend of mine, Kelsey, did this one. She did a series of uh, a few different women and I was so excited. I think I was her first sale of one of her um, paintings. And it's a cool piece to, you know, within the whole gallery wall, um, to know that a friend of mine did one of them and it's actually one of the most impressive at the same time. This is matchbooks I had made for my house. Um, it says the Denton house. It has my Instagram on it, which is at Studi Joe Stallard. And it says, y'all come back now. So it's just for my friends to pick up and grab on their way out. And it was done uh, at four year party. And I did not, I'm not the original uh, person to have this idea. I got the idea from someone I follow on Instagram, uh, Tremont Home, I believe. This is, I guess, two of the three fireplaces that were here in the home when I got here. Thankfully, didn't have to do anything to this one. This one is stained wood. Nobody ever painted over it. I didn't paint over it. I would never. It doesn't have the tile like the other fireplace does, but the next person to buy this house can easily restore that. That's an easy, easy DIY for someone to be able to do. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, it's so nice to have multiple fireplaces in the house. So in an old Victorian house like this, the way that they set the layout is they would have the dining room, the butler's pantry, and then the kitchen so that the staff working in between the two spaces had somewhere to do their setup um, and that they, you know, that whatever was happening in the kitchen was not interrupting whoever was dining in the dining room. And so I think what makes sense to show you next is the butler's pantry. It's got this really cool swinging door that goes both ways. Um, and I can just see the people, you know, holding their platters going in and out without using the door. Um, and it's got beautiful built-ins. So I'll show you this way. I am no historian, but I believe they categorize this as a Queen Anne Victorian. Definitely Victorian, the Queen Anne portion is the, you know, the, the toss up, but um, there is a lot of that in this area and in Georgetown, which is nearby. And so, um, yeah, Victorian and maybe Queen Anne, don't quote me on that. This room actually is, is what the prior owner had throughout the house a lot of is fabric on the walls. Um, this is actually fabric versus maybe like what's popular right now with the limestone wash. It kind of looks like that, but it is a fabric. Um, there was fabric everywhere, a lot of prints and patterns. Um, and so I kind of dialed that back. And I guess my philosophy is um, you can bring in a lot of pattern and interest through fabrics, pillows, textures, um, the decor items versus necessarily the, the pieces that, or the, the furnishings that stay permanent. Um, I did a little bit of that in some rooms, um, in the bedroom I did, I put up beadboard throughout the whole space, walls and ceiling, um, just to provide something, you know, more interesting, but also historic for the house. 
Um, and so, yeah, I, I like um, neutral tones. I, at least for this house, I do. I, I want to do the next house, maybe like a mid-century modern and completely change my style. So I like to kind of practice in different areas. Um, definitely not a professional, but it's fun to kind of push myself into those um, spaces that I haven't done before. So I want to do something different next. This is the butler's pantry. This beautiful built-in holds all of my spices, a lot of my KitchenAid mixer and different bowls and different things, but it's a great kind of prep area, a place to store all of um, the things that don't go in the kitchen or don't need to. And also in this space, um, this is one of my favorite original light fixtures in the house. It's just got a really unique shape. Um, and I think it's perfect for this room. And originally, when I purchased the house, this room had kind of a Pepto-Bismol pink walls, um, a wallpaper trim at the top. I ended up putting up this crown molding, um, and the floor was kind of the, the laminate tile that I could easily just peel back, and I ended up putting in this marble mosaic tile down. Um, that was my first ever tile job. And so learned a lot there, had to cut the tile on the tile saw and grout. And I learned very quickly that small tile takes a lot of grout and that's a really hard job to not lay, not only lay down, but then clean up afterwards. So um, one of the many things I learned in this house, but the butler's pantry is, is a really nice little kind of jewel box of the house. Right behind the butler's pantry is the kitchen. Can't wait to show you. This room is filled with so much light. I love being in here and man, did it look different before. I put in these light fixtures. I had to move them. They were further out. We recentered them over the island. The island was one that sort of had the, it went to here and then it stepped up and came out. And I wanted just more of a flat workspace. So this is actually a bowling alley lane. Uh, Facebook Marketplace, no one's shocked, uh, but I found it on Marketplace. Uh, one of the guys that has been helping me on some of the things around the house, he was able to sand it down so that I could refinish it with a stain. And so he also added a bull nose to kind of match the, the other countertop. What's over there around the other side of the room was there when I bought the house. So I did try to use some of the material that was already here. Um, but bring in some new things as well. The cabinets were kind of a dark blue. The hardware had the, the sort of, um, I don't know what they're called, but you, you uh, pull them out by tucking your fingers up under there. And I never liked them. It, was, it always scared me to go under, it's just old. Um, so I did a lot of refresh. Um, I took down the upper cabinets in here. I put these shelves up all by myself. That was my first uh, kind of woodworking, using all of my different tools that I was using for the first time. I'm really proud of that. Of course, it's not that wildly difficult, but it was new to me and I'm proud of myself. Um, this beautiful plate rack I want to show you up close. Anybody want to guess where I found it? Facebook Marketplace. Um, locally as well, but I have to assume that this is from the 1800s. There's no way it's, you know, 1900s. It's so old. It's got kind of worm holes in it. I don't know if it's worm wood, but the detailing of these little spindles and just the different, um, you know, patinas throughout. And, and it's also just a great storage piece too. So I think it just connects the wood um, island. It brings in kind of depth and dimension into the space. And so it will stay with the house for the next owners, um, but I think it really adds something nice to the kitchen. The next thing I wanna show you are these little curtains. So I always just, I wanna make things interesting. And so rather than keeping the cabinet doors that were here, I wanted to kind of bring in um, some curtains. And so it's funny because my parents, especially my mom, they have touches throughout this whole house um, of things that they've helped me with. They live three hours away, but I have my mom come in here and there to help with different things. And so these curtains I had my mom make, I kind of saw them in my mind, um, but we were also limited by how much fabric we had, so we had to get creative, but I think they're really cute. It's more interesting than just cabinets the whole way across. So I'm really glad that my mom was able to, to do that. I love to cook. 
I, you know, don't cook as much or for as many people, but I definitely uh, come in here and there's space to do anything you want. And so lots of baking, lots of cooking, lots of just, you know, coffee in the mornings. That's kind of my favorite thing. I have these little um, dimensional things hanging in the window that reflect the light in the morning. And so the light comes in through this room and the whole room is just kind of glittered with different light. And so even just making the coffee in the morning is, is so special to be in this space. Um, the last thing that I would show you in this room is this beautiful old English pine, um, I don't even know, armoire kitchen cabinet situation. Um, but this, this not Facebook marketplace for once, I found this at an estate sale, um, quite uh, close as well in Taylor, but it was sitting out in someone's barn. It was in various pieces. And I just saw kind of the color of the wood, the tone of the wood. I didn't know what it would look like when it was all put together, but um, for $200, this piece is exactly what this kitchen needed in this space. And it also, it's just, there's more storage than you could ever need here. Um, it holds all kinds of things like my dog food um, and extra plates, glassware, um, different things. And so I think, you know, I hope that uh, it can stay with the house maybe even when I'm done because it's just so perfectly in this space. This over here, I wish I could have found two, but I only found one at the time um, in Georgetown, which again is a town quite close to us. I found this wall sconce. It's so heavy. It's huge. It captures my, uh, again, the material kind of thing that I try to focus on when I'm designing. You've got your brass, you've got your wood. This is actually the shade that came with it. Um, I love it. And man, if I could have found two, uh, that would have been great. I've tried, I do a lot of um, Google image searching to try to find, um, you know, what is this thing that I just found that feels special? Can I find what it actually is? Who made it? Um, are there more out there if I wanted another one? And I can't find anything on this one. So I don't know if it's handmade or what, but it's definitely a really fun piece. You know what? All the vents in this house were silver. And well, not all of them. Some of them are brown and I replaced them with new ones, but these in this space, I spray painted them gold. Um, so it is not original, um, but it definitely serves a purpose. And I was taking a lot of um, the finishes in this house because I just prefer gold or brass um, over um, silver. And so I was trying to kind of update those things in a way that wouldn't break the bank, but that, you know, um, but that elevated to my style and then just maybe to the times that we're in now. And I think this whole house is a study on, you know, how do you elevate and make something feel expensive or luxurious without spending that, you know, the whole house is secondhand. You can use spray paint to update things um, without having to buy brand new. And so I just tried to think creatively throughout the whole house about how to do that. I um, went to school at Texas A&M and um, studied education, knew I didn't want to teach kind of coming out of school after having worked um, almost full time in kind of more of a corporate setting. And so coming out of school, um, ended up working for Teach for America in their corporate office in New York City and um, definitely found myself, I'm artistic, I love design, um, but I think the business setting, the corporate setting is, is where I, I thrive on the sort of professional side. So um, I definitely have this as my outlet on the personal side, which is the passion of sort of getting that artistic um, you know, opportunity to do that on the side. And so, yeah, I was in New York City, um, worked for Teach for America for a bit, did some executive recruiting, and ultimately landed in the space that I've been in for the past 12 or 13 years, which is private equity, um, and moved to San Francisco, did that for a long time, and then that's how I, I ended up later on in Austin, but still in private equity. So I do currently work um, for a company in San Francisco. I work remotely from home here um, and do operations um, for the company, which is a lot of back office things like HR, IT, compliance, real estate, all that good stuff. The reason the kitchen gets so much light is because it's right off the sunroom. Um, and it's where I keep all my plants. I tried to have the plants throughout the house when I first moved here, but they just weren't very happy and they're very happy out here. 
and so are my dogs. This is the enclosed sunroom porch. And this is where I have all my plants. As you can see, this was a light reno. It was different colors before. Um, the flooring was just kind of PVC um, laminate flooring. But yeah, I, I try my hand at a green thumb here and there. And this room is just really uh, a happy place for the plants. I think the most exciting thing about this room is if you look up high, you can see one, two, three, four stained glass leaded windows. And I'll show you when we get to some of the other rooms, but the huge picture windows in some of the bigger rooms have kind of a detail. They're new windows now, but they have a detail at the top with some vertical lines. And I can see in some of the older photos of the house that um, these were probably the original windows that went in that space when the original windows were in the house. So I love that whoever did this thought of a new way to use them um, and they're just beautiful. They reflect the light in a way that, um, you know, makes this room special. You can see it happening here on the walls from those windows. So imagine if they were, you know, in the living room or the office or the bedroom, um, just really neat. I have a green thumb. I've been able to keep these things alive for as long as I have. They don't all look super happy, but um, one of the things I love to do is propagate. Um, so, you know, some plants do it really well and some of them don't, but it, this is a propagation from another plant where you kind of cut cut it off, let it let the stem soak in water for a really long time so, till it roots, and then you can just create a new plant and keep doing that over and over again. So I don't have a lot of time for that these days, but um, a lot of these plants were sisters of other plants, but yeah, I try. And sticking with the theme, Facebook Marketplace, some of these plants came from Facebook Marketplace. This one in particular, it's grown quite a bit since I got it, um, but that's a great place to look for plants that are super expensive, otherwise at a nursery like a fiddle leaf fig, um, or some of the other, you know, super popular plants in design right now, check Facebook marketplace. People are moving and they can't take them and you can get it for a steal. And sometimes you can get huge, like seven feet plants that would take you forever to grow. And so, um, I hope I can keep this one alive as long as possible, but, um, it's been a fun addition. Now I'd love to take you back and show you kind of how the house weaves into the other spaces, some that we've seen already, but uh, the bedroom in particular is right this way. Now we are in the stairway. Um, we talked about the fretwork from the entryway a little while back, and now here we are in this space. Um, another really budget friendly but high impact thing that I did here is these floral, uh, frame floral prints. So I was just collecting um, these prints as I went along at Goodwill. You can find them for two, three dollars uh, a piece. And then I happened upon a botanical book, a floral botanical book from probably the 50s or so. Um, and I just started picking out ones that I thought went well together or fit in, even just fit in the frames well. Um, and then you can kind of create this gallery wall. I'm sure that this whole thing was 30 bucks, um, maybe even less. And so again, I could have kept going through the whole thing if I wanted to. Um, the book has hundreds more pictures to choose from. So it's a really, if you find a book like that, you know, you can use it for so many different things. And the stairwell leads straight into the primary bedroom. I would say originally this house, this never would have been the primary bedroom. They wouldn't have had a primary bedroom downstairs or probably a primary bathroom. Um, but at some point it was put in and I don't know what this room was beforehand either, but I imagine probably maybe like a gentleman's smoking room, a lady's sitting room, but there's so many spaces down here that, um, you know, I guess they needed a room for everything back then. So in this room, again, you'll find a set of club chairs that I absolutely love. Another, try and remember they're all, it's either Facebook Marketplace or Estate Sales, but found these, had them reupholstered in a fabric that um, I really love, especially up close. Um, and they're just great for this space. Again, the walls in this room, this is a room that had fabric on the walls. It was kind of like a burgundy, 
uh, with a gold thread through it. There was a trim kind of at hip level that was plastic that you could break across your leg. Um, and so I pulled the fabric down. Behind the fabric was a blue and white wall wallpaper, which wasn't very old, but it was actually very pretty. It just wasn't in good enough shape to be able to keep. There was a lot of drywall damage, and so ultimately we pulled all that back. Um, at some point, when I was uncovering the carpet, I found over here by the fireplace, I found um, kind of like a, a concrete pad where a mantle likely was before. And I went back to one of the original pictures that I have of the house and I could see that there was a fireplace here at one time. And so knowing that and knowing that I wanted to restore one back, again, it's not working, but I did want to bring that idea back into the space. I started collecting these pieces. So I got the mantle from an antique store in Salado, which is just north of here. I found the tile, which is Zalige clay tile um, on Facebook Marketplace. Somebody had a huge project in their house and they had the perfect amount left over. I'm saying I had two pieces left from this job that it was the perfect amount somehow. Um, and then this cover as well. And so, oh, and then the best part maybe even is this um, marble uh, fireplace hearth that I found in a nearby town. Um, but, you know, just putting all the pieces back together, even though it doesn't work, it's such a statement in this room. And um, I'm glad that I could bring it back in. The curtains, I kind of wanted, I didn't want them to be the focal point. I wanted them to blend into the wall. And so, um, this is a color in the house that I've used many times. It's Sherwin-Williams shiitake. Um, it's in the entryway on the beadboard below. It's in the kitchen on the cabinets, and it's in this room. And so, again, I wanted the curtains to kind of blend into the wall, have this be kind of a soothing space, and I did. Um, they're just Amazon. They're a really heavy kind of linen um, that works really well in this room. And um, here is kind of a good example of the window that I was talking about with the vertical pieces um, that originally the windows on the back porch uh, up at the top, I imagine originally those would fit in in a window like this throughout the house. Um, and so I didn't want to hide that when I was getting curtains for the room and um, I ended up looking for some shutters so that I could close the window um, you know, at night and from the outside world but still let light in and also show off that detail of the window itself. And if you spin around, um, the other thing on this room, kind of where I started with the design is just a gallery wall of a lot of landscape art and prints that I found um, in my hunts. Again, I just wanted this room to feel sort of soothing and relaxing yeah. and nothing too exciting. Let's head to the office where I spend most of my time since I work from home. It's one of the first rooms that I did in the renovation because I knew I was gonna be spending so much time there. Um, and again, we're in the entryway here. Another set of pocket doors. And this is the office. So in this room, it was probably like a lime green yellow and it had stenciled butterflies. And so I knew that had to go quite quickly. And so I ended up painting it. I did a color match for Pharaoh and Ball Sulking Room Pink. And it's not exact because Pharaoh and Ball is the best um, and color matches will never work, but it definitely captures kind of what I wanted in here. Um, I had to do a lot of drywall repair before I did that. And yeah, it ended up being a really great place. I love working in here. Between calls, I'll just kind of pause and look at my artwork or look at, you know, something in the room. And um, it's definitely a, a space that I don't mind being in, you know, eight, nine hours a day, five days a week. So the original light fixture in this room was kind of like a Tiffany, but not actual Tiffany stained glass situation. Um, and I wanted to bring in some brass. And so I found this. I won't even say it because you've heard it so many times. And I wanted to do something different with the bulbs. And I saw Heidi Callier do uh, a similar chandelier in a dining room with the round bulbs instead of, 
you know, a, a different, whatever the classic style is. And so, um, yeah, I love, I love how it turned out. And I went through so many iterations behind the desk of what to do there. Was it kind of, I had this antique shelf, I tried just artwork by itself, um, but nothing seemed to make sense. So I ended up doing these shelves and I, I, I nailed it. I think that's what it needed in this space and um, also can show off all of my, my tchotchkes. The desk, nothing that exciting, but it was a $50 find that I just ended up painting black. Um, it's a dining room table for sure. And it's great for spreading out all of my notebooks and different things that I have to do throughout the day. And the scale is also right for the room. With a room this size, you want something you know, to anchor the space that's um, large enough and solid enough that feels purposeful. So um, yeah, I think some of my favorite art is in this room. And so I can show you over here. Um, I found this piece at an antique store up in Temple. And I did end up looking up the artist, Bonnie Welch, and she's nothing, it's nothing crazy well-known, but she's definitely a well-known artist from the 70s. Um, and this was kind of a starting off point for the room as well. You can see that I pulled some of the pinks here, the blues here for the fireplace, which was painted when I got it. Um, I would never. And so I love sort of sitting at the desk and looking at this painting. Um, it reminds me of California. I lived in California for about five years. Thankfully, I get to go back for work quite often, but I just, I, I love that one. And then the last piece of art in this room that I would probably point out is right here. Um, I know nothing about this. I don't know the artist or anything, but I found it um, in a store in Minnesota as well. And they had it mounted this way. Um, and I also feel like it just goes really well in this room. And it's so different from kind of the other art that I have throughout the house. This feels very modern. This feels very, you know, abstract. Um, so yeah, it's kind of mixing those different pieces. You've got the antiques, you've got the modern, um, and they, it can all work together at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, I spend a lot of time in here and I love it. Before you go, if you remember, I mentioned that stamped wood under the stairs from the man who built the house, T. Denton. I want to show you. It's just over here behind many doors. So in here, if you look up high, you can see T. Denton, Bartlett, Texas. It was such a cool find when, and nobody, what's interesting with this house is nobody has shown me, the prior owners didn't point out all these neat things. I sort of had to uncover them and find them myself. And so finding that was really neat. I am a home body. Like it's, I could not leave this house for five days in a row and not even realize it. So home for me, I love to move around too. So home isn't necessarily a, a certain building, but it's where your things are. It's where, you know, you walk in the door and you can just be yourself. Um, you can be alone. You can be sitting on the couch, you know, watching your trash TV and, and not feel judged. It's where, you know, you come to be with your, your pets, your friends, your family. It's a, a safe space. It's a place to sort of just uh, drop your guard in a way. Um, and then also, you know, if you are into design, if you are into creativity, it's an outlet for that as well for a lot of people who, you know, are similar to me who aren't designers but have such an interest in that. It's it's that outlet for them. So, um, yeah, I at home is so important to me and it doesn't have to be this house. It doesn't have to be, you know, any particular house. It's just a thing where my things are, where I feel safe, where I'm with my pets, where, um, you know, it's it's just comfort. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.